Hello guys, welcome back to another video. In this video, we are going to learn how to replicate graph format for one graph to another in order to save time in a really easy and simple way. Let's get started. So in this video, I'm going to show you how you can plot a graph from a simple data set. And then I will also show you how you can replicate the same graph to another data set without having to change all the format and settings again. I will show you the data set first so that you can easily see and how we are going to proceed step by step. So let's say this is our uh, first data set. I'm going to plot a graph for with this data set first and then I'm going to make all the settings that I want like legend format and the font and the font type, font style, uh, font size and everything, colors and everything, dimensions. And I'm going to make it as a template and then I'm going to use the same set, uh, same template for another graph uh, with a new data set. So this will all make sense when I'm going to start making the data set. So let's just quickly move to the Origin Pro. So here we can see uh, we have a graph and we have a data set. So this is our first data set. I will quickly zoom in so that you can easily see how it works. So I've just pasted all my data set from Excel into Origin and you can see that these are my long names and these are my short names. So the original graph that we have is over here. I'm not going to use this one, rather I'm going to show you how we are going to make a new one from the scratch. So let's say we have this data set. Let's for instance, we are going to say it and rename it, rename it as template because we are going to use this, uh, the graph from this data set as a template for another graph. And then we are going to duplicate this. Let's say we're going to rename it as a sample. So after we are done with this one, I'm going to quickly add the data set for these data, uh, the data for these uh, graphs. So template is the same, and for the sample one, I'm going to copy the second data set, which is this one. Everything remains the same, just the numbers are different. And just so you know, these are just random numbers uh, generated so that I can just use it as a data set rather than using some other uh, graph or results. So now we have two different data sets, okay? So now how we are going to work with this one is really easy and simple. So let's say we are going to make a graph with this template uh, sheet first. What you have to do is go over here and you will see this arrow down here. Select and you will be able to select all the data. Don't worry if you cover all the extra cells. Origin will automatically just use the cells which has data inside. Now go to plot. And now in this graph, we are going to make a stacked column chart. So this is just an example. So I'm just going to use a stacked column because it, it, they, you will have a lot of things to understand and learn in this one. Let's say we are using stack column. So this is how a stack column chart looks like when it is roughly generated. It has no formatting, nothing done. We're going to try to improve it and make sure that we're trying to uh, work on this graph to make it more uh, presentable. Now, first of all, we don't need these axes because these axes are good enough and explain uh, well enough how these things are working. So even if you want, we can uh, either call call it as months and then we can call it, let's say, as workers. So I'm just editing it manually so that I can easily do that. Now, for this one, we see that our legends are from uh, bottom to top. What we are going to do is, first of all, we are going to adjust this position somewhere within the graph so that it is not outside the graph and takes more space. So rather we are going to try to incorporate the legend within the graph so that it takes take the graph overall takes less space and is more uh, balanced in our uh, overall proportions. Now right click on this graph you will be able to see the option legend. Go to the legend and first of all click reverse order. So now once you click the reverse order you will see that site A, site B and C are now in ascending order from A to Z. Now if we click on this one again and go to properties here, you will be able to see different options which includes text, symbol and frame. Go to the frame options, click on the frame and just click on none. I normally tend to use no frame for the graph for the legend itself because it looks much pretty and much uh, uh, clear when we are showing the graph itself. Now what we are going to do is we are going to select the graph by clicking on the white empty space. You will be you will be able to see that it now has borders around it. Now what we are going to do is we are going to simply click on this line and you will be able to see different options that you might be able to generate. Now let's say if I want to have a outline or layer frame, I'll just click on this one and you will see that now I have a layer frame with my data set inside. Now let's just move it a little bit down so that it is equally proportional from top and from the sides. 
Now the second thing that we are going to do is that we are going to work on the width. So let's say I want to be I want it to be more uh, broader in width or I want it to be more shorter in width. So it all depends on you. So for example, when I'm trying to make it in a way that it has equal space and then it's all done. Now once you're done, what you can do is in order to remove the empty white space here, just click here, go to fit page to layers and then what will happen that this graph is your layer and this white portion is your page. Now when you are doing this it will ask how much border width you want to have. Let's If it says 5 it's, to, it's the current proportion and if you add 1 it will keep it to the minimum width that the graph needs. So once you click on this one you will see that the width now is super small. You don't have to crop it when you're using for your graphs. You can directly use it the way you want. Now this graph is done but let's say we want to work on the colors. So let's say if you double click on this one or if you just single click on this one you will be able to see a small dialog box. So in this dialog box you will have different options which includes whether you want to show the data labels. So if you click on this one you will be able to see the data labels. Now the problem with these data labels is that once it's too big what you can do is simply click on the data label and you will have these options which will reduce the size. So now once you click it will reduce the size but for instance there are still some data sets that are like not too uh, they are not fitting inside because the size of that data is too small. So what we can do is we can simply double click on this one it will open a new dialog box which looks like this and you will have this option which says label. Now in the label options you will have another option which says height label if the column bar height is less than certain percentage. Now if you click on this one, check on this one and if you write let's say if any data is less than 5 points we are going to eliminate that data. So for instance all those data sets that has 2, 3 or any values less than 5 it will automatically go away instead of you doing that. So once I click apply you will see that all those small values are now not more anymore available. So now this is how our data looks as of now. Now let's just work on the color itself. So once you double click on this one you will be able to see an option which says group and then it will have fill color, border color, border type and fill pattern. So in this one we are just going to work with fill color. So now you can see the fill color is by one only. What if you want to go and click on stretch? What it does is that it provides a more broader and more diverse uh, palette color palette and you can choose any color uh, different color in a better range. Now if you want to change the colors you can simply click here sorry you can simply click here and you will have different color palettes available. Once you click on this one you will have this color once you click on this one you will have this color and if you apply if you click on apply you will be able to set the colors. You can also manually select the colors the, the colors that you want but it's always better if you use the colors from the color palette it gives you a more balanced uh, color scheme and more uh, more like in terms of more balanced color scheme that is more good for for your graph or data sets so now if you click ok you will be able to uh, you will be uh, you will be all set but before that I can show you some simple things in the graph uh, which are s somehow more important for you to see but in this I think there are not many things that might you might uh, need to understand as of now. I'll show that in my upcoming videos but for now I think uh, this is uh, all done and ready. Okay so now this is how our graph looks now and the way the graph looked before I will show in another sample set. Now this is our template data set, dat template graph that we will be using for our next uh, data set. So for example this is our sample and this was our template. So if you notice let's say if in the template which is our original data set that we made a graph with which is graph 1 if we change our value let's say make this 93 to 2 let's see what happens so it will automatically change the data set accordingly so now let's just go back and notice that if I add 93 again in this one it will jump back to its normal position so let's see over here you will see that 93 is back again now let's just go to our new data that we are going to plot freshly. Simply just click here, go to plot and just click on the stack column. Now if you notice the graph looks like this when it's first made. So now this thing helps when you have a lot of data, a lot of similar data types and similar data sets and you have different cases you want to plot the graph for. Now we are simply going to go to graph 1, we are going to right click here, 
we are going to copy format now you have different options either you want to just copy the background sometimes you just want to copy the colors so it depends on you what you want what if you just want to copy the style formats which includes the fonts and the colors and everything but what if you want to copy the whole graph itself so all you can do is select on all once you click on all all the gra the format will be copied now go to graph to right click on an empty space go to paste format and just click it and you're all set now the thing that you will notice now is that your graph is overlapping over here with this one what you can do is you can right click here and just say rescale access to show all even if you do that if you say rescale access it won't be able to show you all the uh, data that you want or the way you want let's say I'm trying to keep my legends on the left hand side so in order to balance this one what you can do is you can increase the scale of this chart so let's say if it's now 250 I'm just going to simply click over here and then there will be a new dialog box which says scale tick labels I'll just go to the scale and you will see there are two options one is a horizontal scale one is a vertical scale so now the current scale is at 275 what if I make it to 300 add an additional 25 in the scale just to add additional space on the top so once I click apply you will be able to see that my graphs further goes down that means I need additional 50 to make my graph much more balanced so now if you see I added a 350 to the scale no matter if we, whether I need it or not but in order to keep it consistent with my second graph which is graph 1 I want to keep my legend at the same position but I just uh, increase the scale so that my legend are still at the same position so guys this is how you can do and replicate your graphs now one thing that I want to show you here is that you might be able, you might be uh, noticing that your this data is uh, outside the graph so when you copy this graph this part of the graph will not be visible so all you can do is you can click here you can go to uh, fit paste layers and then simply one that we said previously press ok and it will be all back again to its normal uh, size and everything will be within the border now if you want you can right click here let's say first copy this one copy copy graph as an image once you're done you can set the dimensions and factors copy this and it will take some time to copy once it's done I'm going to copy this graph and put it in a PowerPoint to show how it looks like so let's make another slide here to paste it here this is our graph one let's just reduce the size so that we have our equal uh, dimensions uh, oh, so that we can fit it to the slide now let's just go back to the origin graph again go to graph number two right click here copy graph as an image copy that once you're done with the dimensions or once you are done with the resolution cop graph is copied go back to PowerPoint paste it here and just just see how what is the size of this graph it is 4.2 click here add 4.2 and then you're all set now what's you since now you will notice there's something different with the graph but you can manage that that's not a problem let's see it looks a bit uh, different in dimensions let's see what how we can manage it let's say switch on the guides I'm going to set this as a top and let's just adjust to this one and I'm going to manually increase the height and until it matches the width of the second graph and now you can see I will manually increase a little bit and now we are all set so copy this graph put it here now if you see in the slideshow these graphs looks much better when they are of same dimensions and it also in improves the the way they look in your manuscript and the way they are presented they are much more similar in pattern and it's easy to see the difference between both the graphs. let's say here we can see that the site a has less workers site b has more workers here we can see site b has more site c has more workers and site c has less workers so it's easy to have a comparison so I hope you guys like this video if you have any questions or comments please leave your comments down below I'll get back to you as soon as possible if you have any queries if you have any suggestions please leave your comments down below I always appreciate that I'm trying to speak uh, a bit more slower now, the only reason why I tend to speak faster is that that is my natural tone if I tend to speak slower it makes uh, it makes a lot uh, if I speak slower I make a lot of mistakes and that's not good so I'm just trying to work on it I hope you guys support with that thing and if you have any questions leave your comments down below I will get back to you as soon as possible till then take care Allah Hafiz